So welcome to Technodad Life and my name is Jeff. So today we'll be reviewing the Smart Managed Aruba Instant On 1930 switch. So this is an interesting switch because it has an easy mode, an expert mode, and free cloud management. And as you know from watching this channel, I don't like subscription fees. Finally, we'll see if it's a good fit for our home and small office. Just for a point of clarification, HPE Aruba did send me the switch to review, but they did not pay me or review this video before I posted it. So now let's take a look at the switch. So this is the 24 port model and it has four SPF plus 10 gigabit fiber ports. The 24 port comes in three different versions. One is a non PoE switch that is fanless. Uh, the other two are PoE switches. One is 195 watts and the other one is 100 and, or 370 watts. Uh, both have PoE Plus and a fan. PoE Plus guarantees that you can have power enough for such devices as surveillance cameras and IP cameras. Uh, one thing I will say is the fan is noticeable, so you might want to have this in a separate room uh, if you're sensitive to noise like I am. On the right hand side here we have indicator lights. The only one that we're going to be using is the cloud light which is right there. It will flash amber and green uh, when it's ready to pair. It does take it about 10 minutes to boot up which really shouldn't matter because you won't be rebooting your switch all the time. But as a reviewer rebooting the switch multiple times in one day it was a chore. So let's plug this puppy in and we're going to be doing two things. So one is looking at the advanced setup and then we'll also be looking at the cloud setup. And just from my experience, I would say the cloud setup, even though it has less options, it will be fine for 99% of people. Okay, so I have the switch in the rack. So let's just plug it in and we'll see what happens. And so like I said, this is going to take a few minutes, but ultimately we want to see this spot right here flashing different colors. So we'll come back when this is all done booting up. Okay, so now here you can see this is flashing red and orange. So now we can add it either through our phone or on the computer. And so one thing, if you do need to reset this, the fastest way to reset is get a paper clip or something and then you press this into the reset button and then it takes five or ten minutes to reset. So now if we find our switch uh, it will take us to this page so basically the yellow side is the easy part and then the white side is the management part and so what we're going to do is copy this right here Paste that in. And then now we need to create an account if you don't want to have one or log in. And then it will take us to this page, click on inventory, and then add device and search for my device. Now, if your device doesn't show up, I found that when the switch was just here by itself, I needed to add in the serial number. So we'll do that right now. And once it's found your device, you can just add device and accept. And then our device shows up here and it will take a few minutes to synchronize. And then while it's doing that, we're going to get a, a AP15 also from Aruba. And we're going to plug that in. And up here you can see our device is active now. So let's add our AP. And so it will again take about 10 minutes for that to boot up. So we'll just give that time. And while that's doing that, we'll take a look at this. So here we can change the name of our switch. And right now it just has local connectivity. Here you can see it says how many watts we have and how many are being used. We click on connectivity. We can put in a static address if we want or allow routing in between networks. 
we can see which ports are active and we can allow traffic just from our local network and here you can see this is a PoE device and this is just a regular uplink there's our network we only have one at the moment we can do link aggregation and here we can restart switch to local management or remove once we get through this menu I'll show you what switch to local management looks like and then finally we can turn the lights on and off if we go to networks we can add a network and it's simple as add choose between wired and wireless give it a name uh, VLAN if you're doing that or you can make a wireless network and again you can do employee guest you can give that a name you can set passwords do WPA 2 or 3 and you can even use a radius server for your passwords so once the AP starts flashing orange and green then we can add it to our instant on and so here you can see I added device there is our AP and we can add that and then we're gonna click accept and then give it a name we're gonna call this hall and then we need to click save then here you can see its local IP address and we can set automatic connectivity or static and then if we click on actions we can restart remove or turn off the lights so if we look at the device list we can see it's still synchronizing and so then once it's done that we can check out other things so now we can see I hall our hall AP is active if we close that go back to our networks add a network and we'll create a wireless one call this hall 2 add a password and then click save then let's look at other options <clears throat> so we want to since this is a guest network we want to limit it and so here you can see you can set the here you can set the limit per clients and so we just want this one megabit so they're doing the basic things underneath this is five megabits for gaming or video conferencing 10 for high definition streaming or 25 for 4k streaming now it doesn't let you specifically set uh, what you want that to be but it gives you some general guidelines if we go under schedule we can set a schedule we just want it Monday through Friday and 9 to 5 p.m. if we want restricted access we'd press here and then we put in an IP address and that would be the page that all our wireless clients would go to then click save now once we save that if we go back to our networks tab and we go down to hall then we can go to applications and we can add or delete different categories and so this will limit that those categories mostly but it won't get rid of them so now here you can see I unchecked adult content explicit contact and malicious and risk and so those will prevent those websites from coming up but if you Google search for them or whatever search engine you use they those hits will still come up pictures from those websites will still come up but if you try to actually go to that website then it will be blocked so just judging from the categories I'm gonna guess they're using 1.1.1.1 to filter as a DNS filter to filter out those websites next if we go to applications so this is going to show us which applications or those same categories were used and if we down click on them then it will show us more information about that so since I haven't done anything yet so I'm gonna sign in with my phone I'll go to a few websites and then we'll check right back in okay so now when we look say we'll click on social networking here it will show you the website and then uh, the client if we click on the client we can see the categories for that client also 
So if we want to block a client, we go all the way over here to the right, click on block, and then it takes it a second, and then it shows up under the block client list. If we want to add it back in, then we just go over to unblock, and now it's unblocked again. So that is just about everything under the simple menu. So let's go to the expert mode and we'll see what happens. How we make our switch to expert mode, we click on inventory, click on Matilda, go to actions, and then switch to local management, and then click switch to local management. Now that disappeared from our list, so now we're going to go back and then log into our switch locally, so it won't be on the cloud anymore. So we find our switch address from our router. And now to log in, uh, this isn't easily found anywhere, but you just type in admin and then log in. There is no password. And then as soon as you log in, it asks you to make a new password and username. Then click apply. And now this is the exciting dashboard. Now the interesting thing is, now the interesting thing is you can still control your APs from your phone even though now your switch is locally controlled. So your locally controlled switch though can't control your APs but any changes that you made to the switch when it was under cloud control carry over to local control. But if you go from local control to cloud control, then everything is erased. So let's take a look at everything. So we have a dashboard. It says which ports are being used, uh, system resources. We can give system information, the time, set up our network, do IVV4, IVPv6, HTTP or HTTPS, and manage VLANs, set our system time, Enable or disable daylight savings time. Go to user management. We can add or delete users. We can do account settings. We can age out passwords. Switching, we have port configuration, port mirroring, loop protection, IGMP snooping, SNMP, interface auto recovery, trunk configuration, EE configuration, spanning tree, CSTT configuration, MSTP configuration, VLANs, network discovery, power over Ethernet. You can see your total power, power consumption, and it will show you which, which ports are using power and how much. You can schedule those to turn on and off. Routing, DHCP relay, ARP table, QoS, COS, uh, security, you can turn on authentication, implement port access control, port security, protected ports, DHCP snooping, ARP attack, denial of service protection, HTTPS certificates, and then we have diagnostics, so logging, ping, trace routes, support file information if you need to file a support claim, MAC table, Armon, and then we have maintenance. So under maintenance, you can have it has dual image configuration and you can switch back and forth between images. You can back up and update files, configuration files. And then finally, you can reset. And so for this, you would hit reboots, reboots a couple times, and then it will reboot. Now, one thing with this switch that is common in switches, but not every switch has, is you need to do two things. So when you change a setting, first you want to hit apply down here in the right corner. And then after that's done applying, you want to click save configuration and so that what that means is that it will be saved for next time you reboot. So click save. If you don't click save, then 
it will go back to the settings that you had last time you saved or the default settings if you haven't saved anything. So that is the Aruba Instanon 1930 switch and it's definitely a nice piece of kit. So we're going to be reviewing more equipment in the future because I need to put a network here in this office and then uh, one at my father's house also. So make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell button so you're notified when we post those videos. You have a great day and bye bye. And a special thank you to all my supporters who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about supporting the channel you love. Thank you.